Mr. Bond, please pull your pants up. I don't want to see your tiny secret gadget. Ah, good evening, Mr. Bond. I trust your stay at the Motel 6 wasn't too unpleasant with the furry convention in town. Hope they didn't keep you up all night with their... yiffy. Yes. Today's assignment is an interesting one, Mr. Bond. Remember Goldeneye? Your blockbuster hit in the box office brought to the Nintendo 64? What an amazing piece of work that was. It showed that the first-person shooter genre could indeed thrive on a console. It is one of your greatest adventures and a must-have for the N64 should you wish to purchase one or play it by other means. Yes. Everything was on point. The gameplay, the music, the multiplayer, those classic graphics, the control... Well, not so much the controls, but it's not the game's fault, it's this thing's fault. And the club. The club was shit. Anyway, Mr. Bond, your mission is not to review Goldeneye. No. There are already plenty of brave souls around the internet that have done that deed and done it very well. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to review the games that came before Goldeneye. We want to see a deep dive into the games leading up to your magnum opus so the people can see with their own eyes what an important game Goldeneye was to the 007 franchise. Before that, the Bond games were... Well, you'll see for yourself once you get out there. So how about it, Mr. Bond? Do you accept this mission? What? Hey, where are you going? Hey, you get your ass back here. Get it, hey. Mr. Bond, I, I, come on. Well, shit, I guess I'm doing it. Which is fine with me, because for the first time ever in working man history, I get to review a game on the Sega SG-1000. Now, what in the hell is an SG-1000? Well, Buddy Row, it's Sega's first console. That's right, before the Master System, they had this weird thing. They never sold it in the US, though. That's why you never heard of it. The games, well, they're kind of that thing of the era, very Atari-like. If you played a 2600 game, you know what to expect. And that's what we got here with 007 on the SG-1000. Oh, excuse me, I had to plug my 8-bit Doe Pro 2 in. They're totally worth it, you should get one. So this one's based on The Spy Who Loved Me, which is that one that has the car that can go underwater. And we get this really riveting cutscene to show us that. Ah, really riveting, really riveting, really. So here we are, driving in the water. You got a shot that goes up and you got a bomb that goes down. Your mission, not to get hit by anything. Which seems easy enough, because it is. Once you get a feel for the controls, the game pretty much plays itself. It does get repetitive and boring pretty fast when you realize that everything that can happen has done happened. But that's early to mid 80s gaming for you, really simple games. So I can't really dog on it too much. It's a product of its time. I'll tell you what I will dog on though. 007 car chase on the Commodore 64. That's right, boys. It's time for some Euro jank. Ugh, that's sending a nasty chill up my spine. Ugh, I had a microwave that made this sound. Ouch! Fuck! <laughs> I said shit and fuck at the same time and it came out shituck. The ear bleeding doesn't stop there, I'm afraid. What is this music? Kinda sounds like the 007 theme if it was played by a tone-deaf person. And the music like gets stuck when you crash for some reason. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. I think I'm just supposed to shoot the cars. Which cars? It doesn't matter. Any cars. Just shoot them all. 007 had one too many shaken, not stirred martinis, and now everybody on the road has to die. What's our lesson here? Don't give a drunk man a car with machine guns on it. Did I mention this game is pretty bad, or did I have to tell you that? I mean, look at the way the road is cycling. Does this even count as a frame rate? I mean, the C64 was capable of doing animated roads. Like, look, here's Turbo Outrun on the C64. Look how smooth this is. For C64, anyway. I mean, it could do it. This is just plain garbage. Copeland software, eh? Yeah, you're gonna be coping when you get this for five pounds. You know what's even better? The name entry at the high score, it has no letter limit, so you can just infinitely type shit. That's some good-ass programming right there. Next, we're stepping on up to the Amiga in License to Kill. And it's a helicopter shooter them up and it's one of those where it's hard to tell what you can fly over and what you can't what makes it worse is it looks like your altitude changes depending on how close you are to the top of the screen 
everything is shooting you and it seems like none of your bullets connect to anything. What's interesting is it's not one of those games where it's one hit and you're done. You can take a few hits before you die, but you really need it because literally everything shoots you and you can't shoot anything back. Your bullets are as useless as a Walmart warranty. This is the first screen of the game and this is as far as I could fucking get. And who asked for this? Who said, you know that one scene in License to Kill with a helicopter? I wish they made that into a whole game. I'm just assuming there's a helicopter scene. I haven't seen that one. Helicopter, helicopter, get all shot up and fall down and go boom. That's all I gotta say about that one. Piece of crap. Then we got Live and Let Die on the Amiga. And you're in a boat shooting shit. I'm starting to see a pattern here. License to Kill had a helicopter scene. Let's make a game with a helicopter. Live and Let Die had a boat scene. Let's make a game about boats. Is there a Goldfinger game where you fly an airplane and spray nerve gas on people? And there's a secret code where you get to see pussy galore's pussy? Uh, never mind. Where was I? Oh yeah, boring boat game. So let's take a look at your HUD here. You have this in case you forget it's a 007 game. I think this is your lives? This is what a furry will think is the funniest word in the entire universe. And then you got your gas. You run out of gas, you run out of game. How do you get gas? You gotta run into the fuel drums. And you better not miss one or you're a dead motherfucker. This game leaves you no room for error. You have to do everything perfecto. You know what's funny is uh, Live and Let Die takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana, and we definitely have palm trees, an Aztec building, and a desert. Just a little cool extra to go with our big mosquitoes and insane humidity. Anyway, this game's a little bad. Little shit, also cocks. I mean, all I ever do in it the whole time I'm playing is just run out of gas all the time. Always running out of gas. I think your fuel consumption is tied to how fast you're going too, which is interesting. You know one cool thing they could have done? Giving you a selection of boats to choose from that have different fuel consumption? Game would still be shit, but it'd be cool. Now let's go back to the C64 where we have the Living Daylights. Now I have never heard of this Bond movie. Turns out it's a Timothy Dalton one. No wonder I'd never heard of it. This game is odd. So what you do is you're supposed to run to the right and head for the goal, but people are shooting you the whole time. So you have to stop running and aim the cursor at them and shoot them. Then to start running again, you aim the cursor all the way to the right and you press up to jump over rocks. So you're still Steadily having to go between aiming the cursor, running to the right, aiming the cursor, running to the right. There's no like way to switch in between the two. You have to be doing either one or the other. Also, it says paint gun down here. Apparently, at the start of the Living Daylights, James Bond is shooting other guys with a paintball gun as a training exercise. Anyway, it seems like you make more progress just steadily running to the right and not shooting anybody. Like, if you stay in one spot long enough just trying to shoot everybody, you're gonna use up all your life. Maybe it's a metaphor for life. If you stay in one spot too long, you're gonna waste your life away. I didn't think a 007 game from a Commodore 64 would get so deep. Also, I don't know if you noticed this, but 007 is black? Well, there you go, the first ever instance of a black Bond. Dude, if they ever really did a black James Bond, my racist dad would get so fucking pissed. Now I kind of hope they do it one day. Black James Bond sounds like something Saturday Night Live would do. Very tastefully, I'm sure. Next, we got the spy who loved me on the Amiga. Oh shit, this kicks ass. Whoa. Yo! The Bond rap? Uh, uh, my name's James Bond, I have a lot of fun I go to Arby's and I get a cinnamon bun You can't fuck with me, cause I'm the motherfucking best 007, I'm gonna lay your ass to rest Now let me touch your fucking breasts Uh, the game's fucked up, what the hell's going on? I don't think it looks like this, I'm gonna look it up on my phone Yo, yeah I may have found a bad ROM dump of this I don't know what's going on Let's try feeding it a different ROM See that's what you get on this show you get the real experience of me getting shit that doesn't work. So in this game, you've got one mission. Stay on the fucking road. That's all they ask of you is to stay on the road. If you get off of the road, your armor goes down. And if your armor goes down, you die. Of course, there's all kind of things getting in the way of your progress, like oil spills, shit on the road, people on the road, 
Road cones. Why are there so many road cones? Are, is, does the Spy Who Loved Me take place in Oklahoma? The reason I ask is because every time I've been to Oklahoma, they've always had road work every fucking where. Every single highway you go on is fucking road work, interstate, road work, turnpike, road work, road work, road work, everywhere. And when they get done, now the other road that was open is now so worn out that they have to close it down and work on it too. It's a never-ending thing. I guess if you work in the Department of Transportation in Oklahoma, you've always got something to do. Where was I? Oh yeah, shitty car game. Uh, the big problem with it is the faster you go, the closer to the top of the screen you go, and then you can't tell what's in front of you anymore. So it's hard to tell where the road is gonna go and everything, or what's gonna be on it and all that. So you're kind of forced to have to go slow all the time. Maybe it's trying to teach you not to drive fast. You know, like in real life, if you drive fast, you're gonna get caught by the cops or you're gonna wreck or something like that so maybe you're supposed to drive the speed limit or you know the game just could be a huge piece of fucking crap i mean i'm just speculating here i ain't a game designer maybe this is the greatest fucking game in the world and i just don't know how to play it i'm just a player i play games i don't make them the only engines i've ever fucked with ran on gas or diesel so maybe this game's good and i'm just not good at it maybe that's it i don't know now this next game is not a Bond game, but I have a feeling that if I don't review it in this video, somebody's going to mention it in the comments. So here we go. Here's James Pond Underwater Agent. Oh my God. Yes, this is another one of those perfectly wonderful failed mascot games. <laughs> I bet they think they're so cute. You know what else is cute? The hairs on my ass. I couldn't resist, sorry. License to bubble. Actually, I'm gonna be real with you, dog. Shut up. So the first level is okay. You just grab some keys and then you free these guys. What's cool is you can choose which level you want to go to. And the next one, you're in a toxic waste dump and you have to save all the fish before they turn mutated and then they become toxic crusaders or something. I don't know. Did you know there's a toxic crusaders game out? I'd much rather be playing that. At least that one's fun. This game is like, uh, I don't know, man. It gives you that feeling like you could be playing something else right now. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing half the time. Sometimes I don't know where the hell I'm supposed to go. And it just overall feels like ass to play. And you know how I tell you I hate water levels in games? Well, this whole game is water levels. It's like my worst nightmare. It's my own personal hell right up there with the poles in the Grinch game. A water level with poles would be my ultimate hell. Man, just looking at this game gives me acid reflux and a few other nasty feelings. And you want to know what's worse? You want to know what's the even worse thing? There's a sequel. Yeah, there is. James Pond 2, codenamed Robocod. Oh, God. Ugh. So James Pond is now Robocod, and he's out of the water. That's a... Excuse me? Good grief, how high can you go? Holy shit. I guess this is a thing you can do. He's still going. My God, oh, there, finally. 32nd floor, sporting goods. Well, we now know that you can do that. What use it has, I guess we'll find out. But I guess they figured out that the water level thing just wasn't cutting it. This is just a good old fashioned platformer. And it felt good to play for a little while until they give me this second level where I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. I have deducted that I'm supposed to go up. How up and where up, I do not know, but I think I'm supposed to go up. But that was all I could take of this game before I finally got aggravated and shut it off. Ugh, now that we're done with that nightmare, maybe we can get back to some Bond games. The good news is we're done with the Eurojank, so no more C64, no more Amiga, no more shitty British games. We're done with that. Our next game is James Bond The Duel on Sega Genesis. Now, will this be the good Bond game? Don't count on it, and on it, and on it. Now the pro- Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? This game was made by communists? You know Russian 007 doesn't need special gadgets to do what he does. Kalishnikov solve all problems just fine. Uh, and this is another one of those games where you need a million frames of animation before anything actually happens. Now go down the ladder. Go down, go down, thank you. The controls in this game just feel so clunky for some reason. Ugh. Ugh. 
these sound effects. Oh shit, I'm in the water and the current's taking me away. Oh no, sharks, oh shit. Oh damn, 007's nothing but chum now. Okay then, jump down here. Fall damage, oh fuck off. Can we talk about Jimmy's shitty ass jump? It feels very jerky and uncontrollable. I feel like I'm gonna lose control every time I jump. They say if you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose control. That's true for a lot of things, like fapping. I'm telling you, the shitty controls just make it to where it's really hard to make any precise jumps of any kind. I find myself falling down a lot and having to backtrack back to where I was and fight the same damn enemies I just killed. Not to mention the stupid knockback you get when you get shot. Oh, the stupid game. And if it ain't the knockback, it's the fall damage. And then there's this guy that grabs me and throws me over the side into the water. At this point, I'm just waiting for a plague of locusts to pick me up and take me somewhere. Oh, here they are now. We haven't even talked about the grenades. This is one of the most useless secondary items I've ever seen. They just bounce around and don't hit anything you want them to. God, I can't stand this jerky ass jump. I just think of that Animaniacs scene where they're going, boing, 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 boing. Would you believe me if I told you you have objectives in this game? Yeah, you gotta save the babes, which are up in the top left corner. You've gotta arm a bomb, which blows up this boat, and then you gotta go to the goal. Well, how the hell am I supposed to do all that while I'm getting thrown around like clothes in a dryer? This is the first freaking level, and I can go no further. Because I can't, I just can't. That's how I'm gonna end that. I just can't. I can't with this game. You know what this game can do? This game can get woken up in the middle of the night with the call that its father passed away. This game can have a miscarriage. This game, it can, it can make like a $5 hooker and blow me to Bermuda. Oh, oh boy. We got one more game. This game is based off a spin-off of 007 called James Bond Jr. and is our only game on the Super Nintendo. At first, the game seemed promising. You had this kind of side-scrolling thing going on where you could jump around, you could punch, you could throw grenades and stuff like that. And it seemed to run and play a lot better than the Genesis game I played. But this was only the beginning of the level. The real level starts right after this. It's another helicopter shoot 'em up. If I had a dime for every helicopter shmup I played, I would have two. But it's weird that it happened twice. And this one was just boring. It just goes on and on and on, and it just never seems to stop. And at some point, you can just start dropping bombs and killing everything on screen. And nothing will hit you, except the fact that you're wasting your life away. I mean it, this level just seemed to go on for an eternity. And the fact that it's boring makes it seem even longer, damn. It's so boring, I don't even have anything to talk about with it. I mean, you're seeing it. It's a helicopter shoot 'em up You shoot up, and... That's it. You know what, I could think of a better video game just watching this footage. Okay, here's a better video game. You're a guy who has a gun that shoots swords, and your objective is to defeat the guy with the sword that shoots guns. It's an action RPG, and the more swords you shoot, the more powerful you become. Is it the best idea for a video game? No, but it's damn sight better than what we're looking at right now. Anyway, game's crap. 10-10, would shove a rusty nail up my deck. And Buddy Rose, that is the 007 games video. It was a rough old time, but a good old time. Well, boys, if you like this video, you all already know what to do and if you really like what I do you can become a patron just like these wonderful people a dollar gets your name on the board five dollars gets you in the discord and twenty dollars will get you a piece of art at the end of the video big shout outs to everybody who supports me and everybody who watches my videos and especially anybody who shares it with other people the algorithm doesn't do shit for me I rely on you guys word of mouth so anyway my name is Stuart K Riley and if you've never heard of me I'm Stuart K Riley see y'all